안녕하세요. 아, 제이크 정입니다. 오늘은 어, 뉴저지 주지사 후보로 출마하시는 민주당 대표 세네러 바바라 보노 어, 의원을 모시고 잠시 말씀을 나누겠습니다. Uh, thank you for coming to KBN. Thank you for having me. Uh, for the Korean American Borough's information, uh, could you just uh, tell me about your personal background? Mm -hmm. uh, my father, I am the daughter of immigrants. My father emigrated to the United States when he was three from Italy. And uh, he spoke no English. His parents spoke no English. They had very little formal education. But they came here because they knew in the United States their child would have opportunity. Do you want me to start? And uh, your education and political career. Okay. And um, my, can I talk a little bit about my, my father? Because that's what drives me. My father, the fact is my father wanted to become a doctor when he came to this country. But uh, back then, uh, a lot of the, the, the young people helped to support their family. So he had to drop out of high school. And he became a butcher. And um, my mom was an office worker. We grew up in a very small apartment in a suburb of, in, of Essex in uh, Essex County, where my parents slept on a fold-out couch in the living room, where so my sisters and I could have a bedroom. And um, they didn't have a lot, but we had everything we needed. And they taught me the immigrant values of hard work, of sacrifice, of self-discipline, and most important, the importance of higher educa of education. And um, so. Uh, when my father died, I was very young. I was 19, but I was able to stay at Montclair State University because tuition was affordable back then. And I relied on my father's veterans benefits, his Social Security death benefits. And um, then I uh, took a year off and I went to law school, Rutgers Law School. It was affordable back then. Today, I would not be able to put myself through law school as I did so many years ago. Rutgers Law School is over $40,000. But I had a national defense student loan to help support it um, back then. And uh, when did you decide to run for the political office? I became a lawyer, as, mm -hmm. as you know, and, um, and then um, I practiced law for a while. My husband and I had a, our, our own small business, uh, two, two, prac two lawyers like um, many people, and uh, I had four children in my 30s uh, very quickly, and so my 30s are a blur. <laughs> and. Um, I was involved in Metuchen. I live in Metuchen, and I got involved in the community because of my children. And then someone asked me to run for council for the local office. I never really thought about running. And then they asked me to run, and, and I decided to try it out, and uh, I enjoyed it. I like public policy. I really just decided to run because I wanted to help my town make a, you know, have it be a better place. And, um, and then one thing led to another. Then a seat opened at the state level for the assembly. There was a vacancy. So I ran for that. I was elected, served in the assembly seven years, and then now I've been in the Senate for 12 years. Right, as an uh, uh, elected uh, officer. And uh, could you just uh, tell us about your accomplishment? Yes. Well, I think my, I've had, I've been in the legislature now for some time, and I was the first woman appointed to chair the Senate Budget and Appropriations Committee, mm -hmm. and the first woman to serve as the majority leader in the Senate. And uh, that in and of itself was an accomplishment, getting to that position. And I was the budget chair during the global meltdown during 2008 and 2009. And we had, revenues were just falling through the floor. And we had to figure out a way to stem the, the bleeding, so to speak. And uh, I, we were able to cut over two years, four and a half billion dollars. But a budget is about priorities. And so we were, at the same time, we were able to preserve funding for education and health care. And so I think my accomplishments as budget chair are, are something I, I, I'm very proud of. But I was also the, the sponsor of the School Funding Reform Act, which distributed available state dollars to every child, regardless of where they lived in the state, depending on their need. And it also started to uh, rein in property taxes because there's a, an integral relationship be between funding our schools and property taxes. And so this new funding formula began to rein in the uh, regressive property taxes that uh, really burden our families. Uh, if I'm correct, uh, you are also uh, author of the anti-bullying bill. Right. I am, yes. Okay. Could you just uh, tell us yes, about that? Yes, absolutely. In, t in 1999, there was the, the first massacre at, in Columbine in Colorado. 
and my four children were in school at the time, and I remember reading news accounts about what to do in the aftermath, crisis management. And I remember thinking, you know, I don't want to wait until it gets to that point. What if my children, you know, you think you personalize it. And so I did a little more research, and I found that the perpetrators of this horrific act were victims of bullying, not to excuse it, but to understand what, uh, what seemed to be the last straw, and they, fought, they, they struck back at their classmates. And so that was when we came up with the, the first anti-bullying law, one of the first in the nation back in 2002. I was the lead sponsor of that. We passed it. It was in effect for a while, but we found that some schools were taking it seriously and other schools were ignoring it. So we decided we had to take, make it stronger. And we uh, uh, formed an anti-bullying task force. And they came up with recommendations. And in the interim, there was the suicide of Tyler Clementi at Rutgers University, but that was not what motivated the second legislation. We just made it stronger. We made it clearer that there were certain requirements that we were going to impose on the schools to make sure they had certain procedures in place, certain time frames, certain training, to make sure that schools knew what was expected of them. And so that, you know, our children shouldn't have to go to school and, and be in that kind of an environment of fear and intimidation and harassment. You know, our children go to school to learn. One of my children was, was bullied, but she told me. And a lot of kids don't tell their parents. And I was able to intervene, but we need to make sure that the schools are there. They're the parents, per, you know, the, the parents in, in our absentia. And so I'm very proud of that. It was landmark legislation. There are, there are some blips in how it's being implemented, but we're confident that we will work them through. Okay. Uh, could you tell our viewers why you are running for governor? Absolutely. When people ask me why I'm running for governor, I, I ask, my answer is always the same. I say, how could I not run? Look at the shape our state is in. We have um, 400,000 out of work. This governor's um, economic policies have been a failure. These are economic policies which um, we rejected in the last two presidential elections in 2008 and 2012. They reflect, in my estimation, a failed, discredited philosophy of supply-side trickle-down economics where if you um, enact tax credits at the very top in big corporations that somehow it will trickle down to create jobs. It hasn't worked in New Jersey. And that's why we have the highest rate of unemployment in the region, higher than New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Maryland. And we have the lowest rate of job creation. And so we need to, you know, in New Jersey where I was able to find the opportunity that I needed to advance myself and pull myself up by my own bootstraps, I want to make sure that we create that same opportunity today. And it isn't there. This governor does not have any economic plan. And that's why we're in the situation we are. New Jersey lags the nation in economic growth. And we should be leading the nation. My focus, my economic plan is in detail on buonoforgovernor.com. But suffice it to say that while tax credits to corporations are a small piece of it, we need, in my, my opinion, to redirect, refocus those tax credits to our small businesses. You know, our small businesses make up 95% of our economy in New Jersey. They are the lifeblood of our economy. And I, you know, I, I, over the weekend I was in Essex County and I visited many um, business areas in the cities and some of the urban areas in Newark and East Orange and Orange and Irvington. And so I talked to small business owners and they are crying out for help. They feel as though that their needs have been ignored and they've been left behind. And I will be the governor that stands up for them to uh, serve their needs and, and will not leave them behind as this governor has to our detriment. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with the Korean American community? Well, yes. Actually, I, um, I, I, my legislative district is in the 18th legislative district where I've served as senator for 12 years and as assemblywoman for that for seven years, so 19 years. Um, in, um, in Edison, that's a big piece of it, and there's a, a substantial Korean community there, and um, got to know a, a lot of folks through my job as senator. But I've also been um, up to Bergen County, and um, uh, was just at the, uh, the Korean Thanksgiving uh, celebration, which was wonderful. And I've I've been up here many times uh, with the uh, there was the, the Korean wi um, women lawyers uh, dinner, and so. Uh, very close with um, a number of elected officials up here. So the Korean American population, look, we are a nation of immigrants. And if we're a nation of immigrants, we are certainly a state of immigrants. 
And as governor, I am committed to diversity in every level of government, on our, in our judicial, in our legislative, and in the executive branch. And by that I mean, you know, we have so many boards, commissions, and authorities in New Jersey. And it simply is not reflective of our population. I believe that government can only work well if it is reflective of our community. Okay. Uh, could you tell us why Korean American people should vote for you? Well, I think that um, for a number of reasons. Uh, the, my focus on uh, the economy, I, I mean, uh, not just Korean Americans, but I think any, any family in New Jersey has the same interest, and that is that we create um, opportunities for all of our children, regardless of their background, regardless of where they come from. And, um, and certainly education is a big piece of that. And I will be the education governor, I often say that. Uh, I will ensure that we make sure our children have the resources they need, because our children need more education, more skills uh, to compete in the 21st century. And so my focus on education, I, I think, should appeal across the board to families in New Jersey. But, um, but also with respect to small businesses. As I said, that is the lifeblood of our economy. My economic plan focuses on uh, in, in enhancing their ability to not just locate in New Jersey, but to flourish and to expand. My history as budget chair, I was the sponsor of one of a, of a very large uh, a tax cut to small businesses. My focus has always been uh, on, on uh, ensuring that uh, the welfare of small businesses. And uh, so uh, whether it's uh, the economy or education or diversity in government, I think our, our interests coincide and are compatible. Uh, as you said, you want to be an education governor. And uh, the real issue is the college tuition. I mean, you know, Rutgers mm -hmm. is a state university. It is compared to a private college, the tuition is much cheaper than those were our private colleges, but you know, right now some people even cannot afford mm -hmm. tuition for Rutgers, mm -hmm. state colleges. And how can you address that issue? Well, on two levels. First, I do want to talk about the DREAM Act, but it just in, in general, we need to reverse this governor's disinvestment in higher education. When this governor first came into office, his first year in office, he cut $173 million in our uh, higher education budget. By definition, if you cut, it has to be made up somewhere, and so the students and their families make it up. By, and, and, and Rutgers, uh, the cost of attending Rutgers has increased 14% this four years that this governor has been in office. So what I, I would uh, uh, reverse that disinvestment and ensure, you know, a, a budget is about priorities. This governor gave a record amount, $2.1 billion in tax credits to corporations, and they haven't created the quality or quantity of jobs promised. I would look at those, uh, rather than do that, I think we need to have our priorities reordered in, in a serious way. And the DREAM Act. So many of our students are dreamers. They've come to this country from other countries when they were children, graduated our high schools. We were able to, um, invest in their future, and this governor has stood in the way for four years of, of affording them uh, a, 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 um, uh, affordable, quality higher education by not supporting the DREAM Act. Now, we had a debate at Montclair State last week, and the governor uh, had a, um, a, a last-minute kind of wishy-washy um, change of heart on that, and he said that, oh, his original objection was based on the economy. Well, that's not true. If you see his quotes, it was based on the fact that he said that they were breaking the law, and so that's why he didn't support it. And so forgive me if I'm somewhat skeptical as to his, um, his uh, authenticity in supporting uh, the DREAM Act, because this is a governor that has, we know he has said one thing and done another. He did it with uh, gun legislation back in April. It was his idea to advance a, a bill that would ban 50 caliber rifles. Now, these are rifles that would pierce any body armor would take down a helicopter from a mile away. Well, we sent him the legislation several months later, and he vetoed it. Why did he veto it, you might ask? Well, he changed his mind because he got a letter, a stern warning, from the uh, a gun rights group in New Hampshire saying, if you sign that legislation, we will actively work against you in the Republican presidential primary. And so I don't, it doesn't bother me that this governor is running for president. It's how he's running it, that the fact that he's putting his interests, his ambitions ahead 
of doing what's best for New Jersey. Okay. Senator, thank you for your time and good luck with the election. Thank you. That was quick. That was a half hour. 네, 오늘 어, 바바로 보너 의원 민주당 주지사 후보를 모시고 말씀 나눴습니다. 감사합니다.